contact. Contact has the same contact. Uh, <laughs> Olivia Munn actually found a treasure map inside of an old comic this weekend, so she's busy for this week's journey. So joining me today, Miss Allison Hayslip. Yeah. Yeah. Back from Colorado. We barely survived, as you can tell from my voice. Dude, what <laughs> a rough weekend. I might be signing weekend. by the end of this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you guys. Uh, if, if you managed to make it out, thank you so much. If you didn't because you were too lazy, I hope you have a Nielsen box and watched our coverage. Uh, if you don't... <laughs> Eh, what Yeah. Guess what? We're coming Twitter. to you live from the G4 studios in Los Angeles. Yeah, it was a metric ton of fun. Thank you guys yeah. for coming out. But on the show today, <laughs> got a little treat for you. Ass spray. What? Yeah. You're going to see why deodorant is simply not enough for some people <laughs> when it hits around the net. And I met some gents that could have used some ass spray this weekend, by the way. So speaking of the Comic-Con, we're going to get the lowdown on news TV shows. we got Flash Forward, V, and the Family Guy spinoff, The Cleveland Show. And you're, if you're looking for uh, the con's movie news, we've got what you can expect later in 2009 from Extract, Zombieland, and 2012. Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm sure our invites are in the mail. Oh, you think? Obviously, they need us there. I wonder, do you think he'll ask me to do the washing machine? I hope he does. Yeah. Do it. Do that's, it. That's all right. Not if, not if Edward is asking me. That's my rule. All right, Twitter your questions for the Admiral to at AOTS, and maybe it'll get asked on air. Might not get answered, but it will get asked. <laughs> Time now to run down the top five things on the web. Net! <laughs> Wheels on the bus go round and round. Yes. You knew that, right? But the kids on the bus, they go up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do not have seatbelts on school buses. <laughs> Shouldn't that video be a reason why we, we, we should install seatbelts on school buses? Uh, yeah, if you hate fun. <laughs> why do you hate fun, Kevin? I just hate... Stop hating fun, I hate... fun hater. <laughs> why are you so prejudiced against fun? I don't have anything... Fun I... never did anything to you except make you have fun. I was more concerned about, I don't know... Uh, fun hater! You hate fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm refusing to have some now. I hate it. You are. I'm going to. Coming in at number four is 14 seconds from eight, 1984 Savage Streets, a typical 80s rape revenge romp that at first glance looks like a knockoff of the gang movie The Warriors. Yes, but all is not as it seems here because some gangs, some gangs will greet each other with, you know, over like elaborate handshakes and others settle for just flashing a sign or two. But yeah, the toughs in Savage Streets, they're a little more hands on when they get together. It's Red's turn. Later on, they stab each other half to death, but in like a friend way. So yeah. it's cool. You know, the movie's description promises that the inciting incident is the attack of a woman. I don't think that's possible. Mm. Mm. Three's a crowd. Yeah. You know. Mm. All right, if you watch G4's Comic Con special on Saturday, which you should have, yeah. you may remember Kevin and Olivia's costume extravaganza. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and uh, you may remember Kevin's final costume, a raccoon with balls. Oh, let's, uh, way to boil it down. Way to that's distill what it that. Is. No, no, that was raccoon a. Raccoon? Balls. It was a tanuki. Balls. A tanuki, a mythical Japanese spirit of fertility and mischief. And to prove to you that I didn't just make this crap up, here's a clip from the old Studio Ghibli movie, Pompoko. <laughs>
was what Hall H looked like at Comic Con. Yeah. It wasn't like that crazy. <laughs> but to anyone who thought I was just making this up, I will accept your apologies in the form of cash and or chocolate or pictures of yourselves dressed as tanukis or yeah. oh, don't just trying that. to drape the tanuki over your girlfriend's back like it is a cape. Either way, just send me a photo or two. I'm lonely. You saw how many keyboard cats we got. That's all I'm saying. All those tanuki pictures. I don't think it's a I lot can of stretched it. fur. Send it in the mail. All right, today's number two item is what is probably a commercial for an actual product called Doc Bottoms All Natural A Spray. What? Yeah. Well, the name yeah. the name sounds like a joke, and all the actors in the commercial look like they're in a bad sketch. But the website will take your credit card number, so yikes! I don't know. Like our our shenaniganometers are all jammed on this one, so you guys just watch it and try to figure it out. Are you suffering from pungent pits, foul feet? <laughs> Beastly butt odor? How do you stop the stink? Hi, I'm Adam J, and this is Doc Bottoms A Spray, the all new, all over deodorant that prevents odors before they start and can be used anywhere, and I mean anywhere on your body. A spray your feet, A spray under your arms, you can even A spray your privates. A spray is safe for all your odor zones. I work hard for a living, I sweat a lot, and I got, I got odors in special places, and with A spray, I don't have to worry about that anymore. My butt. Odor zones. I think it's safe to say this product doesn't exist. <laughs> Until we get it in for an as seen on TV segment. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna try it. Uh, we'll either get it in or they'll be busted for stealing thousands of people's credit card numbers on the internet, but yes. one of the two will happen. Yes. I got smells in special places. Your odor zones, it's okay. Feminine. I don't want to think about that. And, and who hands a tool to another dude while it's dip, like, why do you yeah. have to place the Wait, nose firmly here, Kevin, in the plumber's car? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Allison. Let me just get oh, that from you. Thanks, thanks. Appreciate, I appreciate that. that. Watch out, watch out awesome. for the ozone. <laughs> like, real. Oh, by the way, today's number one. Oh, yeah. It's, it's up a, next. It's a recipe Yay! for an ultimate history of World War II. Yeah. But before we go, take a look at some of the Comic Con fun from this past weekend. There's more. <laughs> What loving parent wouldn't want to get their precious little angel an adorable plush chestburster toy? So soft. appears to be footage of a Turkish turkey farmer. Mm. I'll give you a minute for that. Just give, give yourself one, too. Yeah, it's unusual, but I think I understand. Okay, well, it's a it. Turkish turkey farmer, apparently giving a speech to turkeys. Oh, uh, what the what? Yeah, just watch. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get them all to talk on each other. Get a super bug. I feel like I've seen that somewhere before, like in a history lecture or something. Actually, you 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 probably did. I, did? I bet you were gonna make a joke or something, but you probably oh. did because most people don't know this. That's actually colorized footage of one of the greatest threats to Western civilization in the 20th century. Oh, I knew it. Turkey Hitler. Oh. Turkey Hitler. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He rose to become the leader of the turkeys with his passionate poultry-centric speeches. Yeah, but some good did come out of Turkey Hitler. That, that's actually how one of our favorite restaurants uh, actually got its start. Did you know that? I did not. Well, now you mm -hmm. do. But I, uh, I feel like there's going to be a newsreel about it, right? There's a reason for that. <laughs> a great threat of Turkey Hitler looms in Europe. Nations <laughs> trembled as the avian army swept into Czechoslovakia. And now Turkey Hitler is setting his sights on neighboring Poland. With the ranks of the Turkey army growing every day, towns the world over are experiencing a massive shortage of the delicious bird. But now a new patriot is doing his part for America. Southern chef Major Duck Bucket has agreed to supply our boys abroad with his family recipe buckets of fried duck. In honor of his service, the army has promoted him to the rank of colonel. And every 
everyone's enjoying the tasty new treat, even Mr. Churchill. We will. We will. There is nothing better than a duck in a helmet. Yeah, the, the, the best part of that was them like trying to figure out, do we super glue, do we staple, do we just duct tape, what do we do, how do we you get the helmet to stay on? the duck! Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> that's just, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so so much happened at Comic Con, and that's why my voice sounds like this, <laughs> and that's why my brain is over there. Uh, but we saved some of the best for today's show. Right now, let's look at what's going to be on your TiVo this fall. Yes, Flash Forward, the Family Guy spinoff, and the remake of V all played huge down in San Diego. Comic-Con is definitely home to the weird and the strange, so what better place to preview TV's cult phenoms of tomorrow? Everyone's favorite slow-talking family guy neighbor gets his own spin-off called What Else? The Cleveland Show. Your show has an incredible cast of characters. Why was Cleveland the one to get a spin-off? Uh, well, it couldn't be Quagmire, because nobody wants to watch a show about a rapist. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. But Cleveland was the most soulful, he's the most wholesome, he's the most three-dimensional. Oddly, the Cleveland show is probably more akin to The Simpsons than it is to Family Guy. I have made it. Cleveland show's gonna be a little bit more of a heart, whereas Family Guy is just all out, you know, to everyone. But at the end of the day, we're still as raunchy, we're still as sharp, and just a little sweetness at the end of every episode. This is the Cleveland show! Flash Forward shows us what happens when everyone in the world gets a two-minute look into their future. So you're saying what? Everyone's consciousness just jumped forward six months? Crazy as that sounds, yeah. yeah Flash Forward is the, is the story of uh, a world event that takes place whereby everybody uh, that's alive passes out for about two and a half minutes. And in those two and a half minutes, they have a vision of their potential future. So in a way, everybody becomes a prophet of their own future. If you saw your future, could you change your fate? Would you change your fate? Would you want to make it happen? And that's what the show is about, and I think it's something that everyone in the world can relate to. What if I didn't see anything because six months from now, I'm going to be dead? There's so much energy here, and there's so much... Um positive energy here and if you can win over Comic-Con I feel like you're in a great place because they're very influential people. They're so active, they're so um, passionate. The 1980s lizard alien miniseries V also returns to the small screen on ABC. Here's hoping we get more of a Galactica-style revamp than a bionic woman. There will be direct tributes and homages built into the show to the original. We wouldn't be here if the original hadn't existed. But at the same time, it is its today's version. It is its own story. Just be sure not to ask anything that would paint us in a negative light. Excuse me? But tell me about who you're playing. My, uh, my character's name is Anna. She's the leader of the bees. And she comes down to Earth as an ambassador, spreading peace and saying, you know, we're here just to get to know you. Let's exchange what we know about each other and try to help each other. But you start to realize there's something else underlying it all. Don't be frightened. We mean no harm. The fans of the original find this thing sacred. So yes. how has the fan reaction been to you guys at Comic-Con? If you're a diehard fan of anything, it, you're not going to love something else. I mean, I was a Battlestar Galactica fan. I saw the first four episodes of Battlestar Galactica. I was like, you know, and then the fifth episode, I was like, I'm so hooked. You know, you, you can be upset by it. I absolutely get it. I'm a purist as well. Do you know what I mean? But maybe after a little while, it'll win you over a little. You know what the bees? They call it spreading hope. Well, those look like some great shows. We got a little bit of comedy, a little bit of sci-fi, but I think my TiVo might explode. Damn you, Comic-Con. I, I sure hope someone eats a guinea pig in this version of V2. Oh, especially if it's one of the little guys from G-Force. Yes. Animated guinea pigs are totally the best. Thank you. Scrumptious. All right, this August, four of the world's best online poker players will head to Vegas to try to win $2 million in two months in G4's new original series, Two Months, Two Million.
The show kicks off August 16th. And if you want exclusive behind the scenes videos and footage of Playboy Playmates visiting the set, you got to check out the all new, all new! 2M2MM.com and, and watch you don't end up with like an extra M and wind up in like not safe for work land because it'll happen. So just type carefully, kids. Is that really. a new thing we do on the show huh? now? Just try it. All, all new. All new. I like it. <laughs> Still ahead, rides, whips, and hoons. Yeah. Well, for two million bucks. And today's gadget phone is a Sony T90 digital camera. It's super thin with a three inch touchscreen and a 12 megapixel image sensor. It detects faces, but not photo bombs. So get it together, Sony. And later, Edward James almost from Galactica will be here. Live to discuss saving the entire human race and his invite to the United Nations. Stick around. So say we all. This is the greatest toy ever. It is a keychain, and you push the buttons, and it sounds like bubble wrap. The Japanese are brilliant. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Freestyle Releasing's The Collector. In theaters, July 31st. <laughs> This is looking pretty good, you dirty bird. You're a dirty bird. I'd cuckoo for your cuckoo You know what I'm saying? I'm cuckoo. It's last time I try to open myself up to you. All right, uh, Link, have you seen any celebrities at Comic-Con? Actually, I have. Uh, I saw Johnny Depp today and Seth Green yesterday. Wait, where did you see Johnny Depp today? Uh, in Hall H, actually. I'll see you later. Bye. What's going on, everybody? We are live. And that was an awesome Link. Very awesome. Awesome. All right, I'm taking a break from the news break, but here's Kristen Adams. Hi, Kristen hey Adams. Guys, how What's you up? Doing? <laughs> All right, right now it's time to start the feed. It's Monday, July 27th, and here are your top stories. After an internet uproar, AT&T has unblocked access to the popular and often scandalous message board 4chan, the birthplace of lolcats and rickrolls. Days ago, AT&T customers found that they could no longer see some of the 4chan boards. Today, AT&T announced that it did not block access to the site for content reasons. Instead, the company says that they restricted access because 4chan was under a denial of service attack and the flood of traffic created a domino effect, which was affecting other AT&T customers. So AT&T blocked the site until the threat went away. Now with access to 4chan restored, the internet has been spared what could have amounted to an online riot of epic proportions. Apple is making a deal with four huge record labels to finally include booklets, interactive features, and liner notes with downloads of entire albums. EMI, Sony Music, Warner Music, and Universal Music Group hope that these added extras will encourage fans to buy entire albums and not just hit songs from iTunes. Additionally, the Financial Times, which broke the story, is reporting that inside sources say that the long-rumored Apple tablet is due in September. And that device would make it awfully easy to read those teeny tiny sleeve notes. The $1 million Netflix prize may finally have a winner. In 2006, the online DVD rental company held a contest to improve the accuracy of its recommendation system. Anyone could submit a way to improve the Netflix recommendation algorithm, and a team known as the Ensemble did just that in a photo finish. By submitting just four minutes before the deadline, they beat out 43,000 competitors and managed to boost the accuracy of the algorithm by 10.10%. Not a bad way to make a million bucks. They're smart. Netflix still has to certify the results before the seven-figure prize is awarded. And finally, we have one heck of a theft story. A New York couple apparently figured out that the red light traffic cameras posted at intersections in New York used pricey Nikon D2X digital SLRs. So they grabbed a cherry picker and stole 22 of the $4,000 cameras. Apparently, that's where their genius ended because they allegedly sold the stolen goods to a pawn shop for just 300 bucks a piece. That's a $3,700 markdown. The alleged thieves were caught and all of the stolen cameras were recovered. So unfortunately for New York drivers, the cameras were replaced within 48 hours of their disappearance. Small window to run those red lights. Get all of the news you need to know anytime at the all-new all new. G4TV.com. I'm Kristen Adams, and you've just been fed. Back to you guys. It's a well-oiled machine around here. Sometimes you got to give a little great. heads up that an all-new is coming. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Appreciate it. Uh, that, I love the all-new. Mm -hmm. I love that Kristen had a whole bunch of new cameras today.
You did what? Kristen came into work with a whole bunch of new cameras today. Shut up. I was like, that's awesome. You probably got a good steal still on that. That was not bad. All right. You know what I love, what uh, love? Allison? I love rides. You know what you else do. I love? Uh, I love whips. Love? But you know what? I just, I just, I roll out of bed and I think, Wait, man, if I don't get one today, I'm gonna go crazy. I what is it, Allison? Whips. No, oh, we already did whips. It's 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 hoons. It's ride hoons. whips. Ride ride did whips. Did you say hoons? Ride whips and hoons. It's a car <laughs> package. In the world of automobiles, what you pay for is what you get. But if you're still cruising in that old clunker, well then here's a few dream machines for you to drool over. For all you billionaires out there, you'll want to get behind the steering wheel of the Bugatti Veyron, also known as the fastest car in the world. This speedster boasts an impressive 8-liter, 1,001 horsepower V16 engine. It goes from 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds and has a top speed of 250 miles per hour. Besides the serious muscle under the hood, the Veyron's body is aerodynamically engineered to reduce drag and maintain its structural integrity at high speeds. This road machine is already available, so there's no reason you shouldn't own one, unless you can't afford the $2.1 million price tag. Next up, Mercedes-Benz is revamping a classic model with the SLS AMG Goldwing. EMG CarTech leaked footage and images of this latest model, which claims to have a 571 horsepower V8 engine and the iconic swinging doors that'll put a DeLorean to shame. Although details are still under wraps, Mercedes projects that this car will go from 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds and have a top speed of 196 miles per hour. The SLS AMG will be officially debuting at the Frankfurt Auto Show this September and will sell for nearly $300,000 when it hits the streets in 2011. For those who'd rather burn rubber instead of fuel, Tesla Motors is adding a new addition to their electric-powered family with the Roadster Sport. This zero-emission sports car runs on a 288-horsepower motor that'll take this baby from 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, just a hair faster than its standard Roadster counterpart. This car has a 220-mile range on a full 3.5-hour charge, which isn't bad considering that conventional Speedster engines are burning up to 9 miles to the gallon. The Tesla Roadster is already available starting at $128,000. That's the price you pay for hauling ass while staying green. So if you're looking for speed, power efficiency, and style, well, you might need to rob a bank or two before you start speeding down the Autobahn in one of these luxury Roadsters. to say whips. You're only like encouraging I... them to never change the title of that package. <laughs> like, really. I know we can't afford graphics, but... Hoons. That's why it should be rides, whips, and whips. Let's get some photoshops <laughs> going with hoons. Like, I want Horton Hears a Hoon and, like, all that stuff. Horton like, Hears a Hoon. Let's get some people to throw some stuff together. I would read that book. I still don't know what a hoon is. Whatever. Oh. We're testing a camera so that you don't have to test it or steal it or whatever. It's time for Gadget Prawn. Sony's camera is super thin. Yeah, but the specs are beefy. <laughs> they say that form follows function, but in the Sony T90's case, they go hand in hand. This digital camera is impossibly thin at just under 5 eighths of an inch, and that's including a 3 inch touchscreen and 12 megapixel image sensor. It's also smart enough to detect faces, smiles, and what mode you should be shooting in. So stop worrying and let the camera do the work for 265 bucks. All right, we can, we can always count on Sony to make something look and feel great. And the T90 is one of the thinnest and lightest point shoots we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It's just a hair over half an inch thin. Look at that. It is tiny. So obviously it goes anywhere in any pocket. It will definitely impress. And the entire back of the camera is also a three inch touch screen. Look at that little smudge panel right look there. Look at that. Oh, that's my mouth. Easy. Uh... Easy. <laughs> Does it work like we wanted to? It does now. Um, <laughs> the touchscreen works fairly well. Uh, the, the pressing requires, like, you have to kind of use your nail more than your fingertip, and I don't like the way the screen, remember if you, like, would touch an old LCD computer monitor, like an old panel one, and it yeah. would get that weird liquid ripple? Oh, you get yeah. that on this, and 
It just feels weird. It feels fragile because every other touchscreen we use now doesn't do that. So the icons and buttons are large, easy to find. Navigating the menu at first will give you an, uh, like your, your brain will explode. Because um, it, is, it is complicated at best. But then you'll start recognizing the icons. It'll make some more sense. But right. it is a little... Uh, a little weird. You all right there? Yeah. No? Well, it's it's loaded with auto detection stuff, so I'm seeing if it's detecting your face. Is it detect Wait, smile. It detects smiles. Oh, I took the picture. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, done. Wait, but does it result in a better picture? You know, Let me you check know it what out. else can detect smiles? I don't know if you guys are aware of this. Oh, look at that. Human beings. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're that stupid, you can't look through the viewfinder and go, oh, he's smiling now, and then snap it? You don't deserve to own the camera. <laughs> that is true. So but he, most of these features, the ones that you mentioned there, like the smile detection and, and their shake reduction and all that other stuff, like that, that's standard in similar phones, so you kind of have to include them these days. The, the face and smile detection, they work well. All right, The auto-detect mode will make sure that the camera is ready for the conditions by picking the right scene mode for you. Um, they'll make your, your, your snapshots better, don't get me wrong, but they will not turn your pictures into work of art. Like, that's, just, that's not going to happen. That was amazing, Danny, by the way. All right, now, in the past, Sony has fallen just short of great image quality. How short, Allison? Just short. Okay, just making sure. My poor voice. Yep. Uh, so is this the camera we've been <laughs> waiting for? Uh, unfortunately, no. The, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The picture quality is only good, and it's definitely an improvement over other Sony cameras. Uh, 12 megapixels, it, it, it gives you sharp photos and the colors look good, but the low lights are grainy, and bright photos seem to have a glow around them, especially if you're shooting directly into the core of the sun uh, for some reason. Um, slightly above par for a point-and-shoot camera, but not, not mind-blowing. Right, and it's 265 bucks, which yes, is, it is. is a little pricey for a point-and-shoot, mm -hmm. so do we think it's worth it? Kinda. Maybe. Kinda. Yeah. I look for for a little bit less money, you can get a far worse camera. Um, we really like the slim design and the large touchscreen and auto detection modes. Uh, that makes this camera easy to use, which is great. But even though the picture quality isn't phenomenal, it's still more than enough to get the job done. So you could yeah. get better. You could also get a lot worse. So guess so what we're rating it. So what are we giving it? Three out of five. All right. All right. There it is right there. Uh, the T90 doesn't go above and beyond, but this camera will make sure you get what you need from your snapshots. And for many people out there, that's, that's more than enough. All right, I like it. That's it for Gadgetron. And remember, for more, even more of the latest news on computers and tech, check out g4tv.com slash the feed. So, your boring everyday life has got you down, you say? Yep. You want to become a secret agent, you say? Uh, sure. Well, then you'll probably need some gadgets, and you'll definitely want to attack this, you say. Super secret agent, you need to keep your information, well, super secret. That's why every wannabe man of danger needs the USB fingerprint flash disk. Not only does it prevent prying eyes from data stored on the key itself, this little device also doubles as a fingerprint reader for your computer. This way you can lock and encrypt files on your PC and use your thumb instead of having to remember all your passwords. But, buyer beware, this will only encourage your enemies to try and cut off one of your fingers. It's no good. Pick it up for 62 bucks. If you don't have a pair of super high-tech sunglasses with a hidden camera, you, sir, are no super spy at all. So grab yourself a pair of Otis Spy Cam sunglasses. Usually glasses with onboard cameras are hideous and anything but subtle. But these stylish shades look like a gaudy pair of Oakleys that any Jersey Shore D-bag would be proud of. And I would know. Recording standard depth video is as easy as pushing a button, and the footage is stored on a discreetly stowed micro SD card. And to answer your question, yes, girls do in fact notice when someone leaves behind a pair of sunglasses. So don't try it. All veterans of international espionage know communication is key. So if you need to tap into your partners but you don't want to get noticed, get yourself a GSM Bluetooth pen. This fully functioning pen pairs with any Bluetooth-enabled cell phone. Using the microphone and the pen cap and hidden earpiece, you can communicate with your fellow agents while writing your uh, grocery list. And your... Okay, you know what? Who am I kidding? It's great for cheating on tests. It is. It's specially designed for students who need help on their examinations. Actually, I guess those wouldn't be in quotes, but whatever. Uh, but please remember, kids, cheating is for chumps. And finally, no collection of spy swag is complete without a badass laser. Yeah. Enter the Airy series. This laser is no joke. It melts plastic, ignites matches, pops balloons, cuts electrical tape, and yes, it definitely damages your skin. 
At this point, you're probably saying to yourself, a laser? Big deal. I have one of those on my keychain. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, wait. Do you have this on your keychain? Seriously. Look at the size of this thing. It has keys because it's dangerous. It has cool-ass protective eyewear. Whoa. Okay, call me crazy, but when you have to put on special glasses to use something, it's probably dangerous. Or it's really, really cool. Head on over to G4TV.com slash AOTS for info on all of these new releases and more. Spool off your FTLs. Edward James Almost will be jumping into the studio yeah. right after this. The feed is brought to you by Gillette Fusion, Gillette's closest, most comfortable shave. Savior of the entire human race. Kind of a big deal, folks. A man who survived the silent apocalypse and lived to tell about it at the United Nations. This one's still alive. Get him the hell out of here. They got the girl. They've got the little girl. This makes it a lot easier. I just take the little girl, and I'm out of here. Not a chance. Yes, yeah. shoot him! Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Edward James Olmos is here. Yeah. How are you, sir? Excellent. Excellent, and uh, I want to thank everybody here at G4, and especially all the people that we've been uh, around over the last weekend at uh, Comic-Con. This was your first Comic-Con, right? Uh, first time on the floor. L I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and how are you holding up? It was fantastic. I mean, it was hard because, I mean, everybody wanted to say hello, thank you, mm -hmm. and take pictures. So it became a real... Right. You become really patience. adept at throwing elbows. I didn't have to do any of that. No, did, you have, did you have the swarm no, of elite security guards? No, because all I had to do start talking, everybody froze. Everybody shut up, <laughs> everybody froze, and so I would start doing, going into soliloquies on why the, the, the uh, plan is such an incredible experience that they're going to love, and they just, everybody shut up. There were thousands of people that came with, to hear to speak. Incredible. It's, it's been amazing what Battlestar has done. Well, and, and that's, that's the thing, because for, for a television show, y yes, you can speak to the fans, but you also get invited to speak to the United Nations. First time in the history of this planet. I mean... First time. Let's see. That's... I get invited to Pizza Hut by 14-year-olds, and that's had, about it. We had the entire assembly and, and extra people. Everybody came. And the reason that we were invited is because of the content of the show. And the outcome... And this is the first time I'm doing it on that national space, you know, an interview. Mm -hmm. The outcome has been the change that it, no one even knows about. This is the first time it's going to be said, okay? The United Nations changed their charter three weeks ago after Battlestar went and spoke at the UN. They changed their, their, the entire understanding of their charter that was written in 1947, like their constitution, right. so that they will never use the word race as a cultural determinant again. Therefore, there's only one race, and that's the human race. And that came out of, and the only way it could come out was because Battlestar went there and started talking about reconciliation and the stuff that we talked about and how there was only, there, there, weren't, there weren't different Right, race is a, is a human invention in, in, no, the, in no, the connotation race, that we were using race, it. Race, no, race is solid in understanding that there's only one usage of the word. The usage of the word is means it's the human race. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's why I said, this. And that's why I said in terms of segregation. Listen is. to this. You, this is what blows you. can go online right now and put it online. You won't believe it. But nobody knows. Nobody knows that the charter has been changed. The well, UN will never use the word race as a cultural determinant again. Neither should we. That's the moral of the story. Well, and, but why? and so I, after I was done, I just turned to the entire U.N. and I said, you know, because the head of, of the U.N. was speaking. And I said, he used it. He used the word race as a cultural determinant. And I didn't say anything. Then Whoopi Goldberg said, you know, everybody was talking and I didn't see nothing. I was kind of depressed. And I, didn't, I couldn't understand it. And then Whoopi says, Eddie, how do, you, how do you feel about that? I said, 
I, I shouldn't have been invited here. That's exactly what I said. It's online. You can watch it. I said, I shouldn't have been invited here. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. But, you know, I can't believe that you just use the word race as a cultural determinant. I'm at the U.N. Right. You know? And so I blasted him, and it's right on. I did four or five minutes. How do you respond? Does he go, well, my bad? Yeah, no, let's no, no, uh, let's no. get the little you know charter update? You know what he said? He said, you know, after I, I, I he put his head down, and you, by body language, you knew that the guy was really, really, really out there. He had really got hit, blindsided. Mm -hmm. I blindsided him. And he said, you're right, Ed. You know, and under the, in, under the you know, our constitution, you know, our charter, it's, we use the word race as a cultural determinant. And I said, you know, then you should change it. And I said, so say we all. Yeah! <laughs> and, and the place went ballistic. That's incredible. It went nuts. So why, why? And then three weeks ago, they came back and said, just three weeks ago, nobody's even printed it. I said, it's a day in the news for the first time. This is the first time it's going out over the airwaves. The entire charter of the United Nations has now proclaimed that they will never use the word race as if there was a black race, white race, brown race, yellow race, indigenous race, ever. So and if you, we use it, we're making the biggest mistake in the history of this planet because there's only one race, ladies and gentlemen. That's a human race. So think about it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just got learned, no, audience. You didn't get learned. They just got learned. <laughs> they, you, that was a schooling. <laughs> no, you took them to task. It was, it was one of the hardest things that's happened to me because I, it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Battlestar. We would have never been on that floor. What? Are you, did they invite the Sopranos? Did they right. invite? Did they invite <laughs> West Wing? Yeah. You know. Did and, and they discuss very major situations. What caught them was the fact that Battlestar and their writers had decided to take on what it is that's happening. Like reconciliation. Can you imagine the reconciliation between the Cylon and the human being? How did that happen? How could it happen? When did it happen? How did they get to talk? If, if the, you know, if the Palestinian and the Jew could only see Battlestar, they'd understand how to reconcile. Well, it's time to get some people in the VL booth and make sure that it's done well, for their region. People, <laughs> people turn to me and they say to me, you know, they say to me, Eddie, but that's, you know, that's fake. That's, you know, it's, it's make, -believe. I say, you know right. what? The UN just blew you guys out of the water. Because as far as the UN is concerned, it gave them the ability to talk about reconciliation, right. about children in war, okay? About terrorists, about, you know, <laughs> major pieces of information that are going on today on the planet and that's what they need to do at the UN. Well, I'm glad you came here and shared it with our you, audience. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. And letting me speak longer than No, 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 no worries. You guys you only get on here for Get a box set or 12 he, and he give it to the world. <laughs> Cuz we no, need some healing. What you got to do if you want to see more buy the Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Is that what you said at the UN after it changed no, the charter? By the way, it's coming yes, out Best Buy. Said, Get there on Tuesday. I said it so many times. <laughs> at, I said it so many times at the Comic Con. People started coming up and going, Blu-ray. I love it. I love it. Edward James almost, everybody. I'm sorry. Hey, we're out of time, man. They're, they're going to cut to break. They're gonna cut to break. But go, go ahead. Cut to break. The plan coming out October 27th in your stores. If you buy more than 350,000 to 500,000 units in the first day, we'll see. Many plans. There you go. Many, 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 Pick it up. Support the Blu-ray. Go for it. Edward James almost yeah. stop saying race. Yeah. Jerks. Stop yeah. saying race. We'll be right back, everybody. Stick around. More tag of the show coming up. Sorry, I didn't let you get out. Free swag. Splinter cell poster. I got 15 seconds to get one or fail. Go. Sweet spot right there, huh? Cool water, mostly. Mm, some penis juice? Mm, yeah. No, just a dribble mm. of the cool water. I don't. I don't know that I want to see that tomorrow. No, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I will, but I just don't. Yeah. Uh, there's a low pressure system moving in, and it's actually bringing lots of rain and fail with it. Chance of Andrew WK doing the weather for Fox 23 in Tulsa? Mm -hmm. 100 percent. Oh. Mm. Andrew 
WK joining us here with the weather. Hello, everybody. As you can see, it's a beautiful, <laughs> clear sky. This is a great. You got one building here. You got another building here. Now, both of these buildings are going to remain there throughout the day. Okay, I think you're going to be pleased with that. You have a large gray cloud scooping down. Uh, you want to watch out for that. This is, uh, looks essentially like a, uh, a, a panhandle or some kind of a. Now, you see, this? there's a little green in there. That don't, don't mind that. It's uh, it's not slime. It's not. It's just a little alien uh, invasion there. It's, it's, today is Friday. Sunday is the day that comes after Saturday, and then you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. This is how the week works. This is something I learned. Awesome, awesome. Oh, Andrew WK. Oh, awesome stuff. Yeah. I, I, I like Andrew WK, too. I actually like, like him. Yeah, it looks like a southerly wall of suck is blowing in over that yeah. cliff. I, and, Andrew, again, I, I like it, but you, sir, are no Al Roker. Mm -mm. And thankfully, actually, you're... Well, you're not even half of Al Roker, so that's that's pretty good. Oh, just true. just fail it. Fail. I love at the end that he was like, "Oh, that was such a rush. Yeah, that was I, a just, rush. Did, I yeah. just did the weather." Some people do lines of blow, but I, I put the green screen. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Right, go to g4tv.com/aots for all the things you saw today and more. That was a show today, huh? Yeah. Was, yeah. I was not. My voice survived. Your voice survived. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all grew a little closer today as fans yeah, as well. And, I liked it. And uh, go buy Battlestar on Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, Edward James seriously, almost. Edward James almost. Thank you, wow. sir, for rocking Thank that you. one today. That was awesome. And X-Play is coming up next. I don't know if they're going to be able to top that. We'll see. My guess is no. Unless they get Obama on or something like that. Or Andrew WK to do the weather. Challenge Obama. Are you dropping the show? gauntlet on X-Play? No. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> it's on now. That would be that would be impressive. Guys, eat your duck buckets. Support the war. Stop with a helmet!